The Pharisees approached Jesus and asked, Is it lawful for a husband to divorce his wife? They were testing him. He said to them in reply, What did Moses command you? They said, Moses permitted a husband to write a bill of divorce and dismiss her. But Jesus said to them, Because of the hardness of your hearts, he wrote you this commandment. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, no human being must separate. In the house, the disciples again questioned Jesus about this. He said to them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. And people were bringing children to him in order that he might touch them. And the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he became indignant and said to them, Let the children come to me, do not prevent them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Amen, I say to you, whoever does not accept the kingdom of God like a child will not enter it. Then he embraced them and blessed them, placing his hands on them. Good morning. Welcome to a short biblical reflection on the gospel according to Mark chapter 10 from verse 2 up to 16. This is the question about marriage and divorce and about Jesus who blesses children. The gospel reading for 27th Sunday in Ordinary Time, Year B. This passage of the Gospel contains two parts. The first part about the marriage and divorce, which is more uh, expanded, and the second one about children. Those two parts uh, might look like uh, independent, but we will see later on in the interpretation how they can go together. The first part contains, of, of course, the problem which was posed by the Pharisees, who pose the question in order to test Jesus. Then Jesus answers them, uh, quoting to the different texts from the book of Genesis. I put in the within the brackets those references. Firstly, from Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, God made them male and female. And then what is highlighted in blue, for this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh is from chapter 2, uh, verse 24, from the book of Genesis. And then later on, uh, Jesus also explains this matter also to the disciples. Let us, let us go first to the biblical context. The first text quoted in our Gospel is the one which is on the screen highlighted in, in green. Is the second line of verse 27. And God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Here, uh, in this verse, we have play on singular and plural. The first line states in singular, man, and created him. And the second line changes now, male and female, he created them. So, man as an individual is expressed by community, male and female. Therefore, man as individual referred as him and then as community, them. In the second uh, text, which is quoted uh, from the book of Genesis, chapter 2, verse 24, uh, we have it also highlighted now in blue. Uh, it is, by the way, in the first uh, reading uh, in our lectionary. So let me read from verse 21. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep uh, to fall upon the man, and he slept. Then he took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God has taken from the man, he made into a woman and uh, brought her to the man. Then uh, the man said, This one at last is bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman, for out of man uh, this one was taken. Therefore a man leaves uh, his father and his mother and clings to his wife, and they become flesh. Uh, especially this uh, joyful expression that this one is uh, at last bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. So it means that woman uh, is so naturally uh, linked, uh, joined to man. 
and then also by naming uh, especially if i would like now use the expression that woman for out of men uh, this one was taken because in hebrew have woman is isha a man is ish so woman is taken from men woman uh, isha is taken from men ish ish isha and now that uh, also not only in the new testament jesus states about uh, marital unity not only even as here the creation story but also we have it in prophetical texts condemnation of divorce in the book of malachi chapter 2 from verse 13 up to 16. this also you do the altar of the lord you cover with tears weeping and groaning because the lord no longer takes one of your offerings and accept it favorably from your hand and you say why because the lord is witness between you and the wife of your youth with whom you have broken faith and uh, thou she is your companion your covenant uh, covenanted wife did you not uh, make uh, did uh, he not make them one with flesh and spirit and what does the one require godly offspring you should uh, be on guard then for your life and do not break faith with the wife of your youth for i hate divorce says the lord the god of israel and the one who covers his garment with violence says the lord of hosts you should be on guard then for your life and you must not break faith and finally also let's uh, mention that at the time of jesus there were two schools one we could say more conservative uh, represented by shammai who only held the possibility of divorce following the law of moses in serious cases transgressions uh, like unfaithfulness why there was also more liberal school of hillel if we use this terminology liberal uh, which uh, allowed divorce for any reason uh, that displeased the, her husband for example such as inferior cooking but concerning the text of malachi i would yet to mention that uh, there is very strong stress first also that in verse 15 did he not make them one with flesh and spirit this uh, phrase refers directly to the book of genesis chapter 2 verse 24 uh, that therefore a man leaves his father and his mother and clings to this wife and they both become one flesh uh, but also that the, for i hate divorce is parallel to another expression and the one who covers his garment with violence so the lord hates uh, divorce and hates the one who covers his garment with violence so divorce is like a violence like a crime so the biblical context show us those two basic texts uh, of creation uh, because jesus referred to the origin that from the beginning god created them male and female in order that they form a unity and they are one not separated and also the text from the book of malachi could show clearly that thou there was a common practice since the law of moses for a divorce but uh, in uh, the book of malachi there is the strong pronouncement against divorce and also the concession given in the books of uh, moses was given as jesus explains because of the hardness of your hearts hardness of hearts uh, it is a typical expression uh, indicating uh, unfaithfulness to god uh, being uh, uh, rebellious against uh, god's law god's will and now how we can connect those children with uh, the matter of divorce of course children uh, the proper environment for them is to be raised in family so if the family is broken then children also suffer similarly as the disciples do not want to allow them to come to jesus to receive uh, uh, the blessings from jesus because in fact people were asking him just to uh, touch them but if we would uh, translate more literally the last verse uh, that sounds like this and embracing them placing his hands he blessed them so blessing is the 
main uh, action uh, embracing and uh, placing hands only lead to blessing so people were looking only to touch them but uh, jesus did more he blessed them so now if the family remains one then the blessing of god is bestowed on that family and remains and is bestowed on the children if the family is broken there is no place for god's blessing i would like to wish you a nice day a nice reflection on this gospel reading god bless you